Welcome to part two with Philip Aboyans, and we are just going to continue where we left off. Thanks for being back. Um, I just we decided together that that just wasn't enough. We needed to dive deeper into this whole. For a recap, for those who didn't see part one, go watch part one on this, please, because you're going to lose a lot if you don't watch part one. But I'll recap real quick. Philip was was one of the writers on the film "I'm Not Ashamed," which was based on the Columbine shooting. Uh, Eric and Dylan, Rachel Joy Scott, the uh, American martyr, was shot first. You had Rachel Styries, Dylan and, and, and Eric Styries. It was available online for some bizarre reason, so, as if we could you know, glorify something like that. But that's the conversation. The conversation is, of course, on the heels of Uvalde, another school shooter, only the second teenager shooting children. Other than Eric, well, I think the third. Well, I think this boy was, yeah, he's 18. He's 18 years old. Nobody was still a yeah. senior in high school. Yeah. Okay. The continued conversation here is going to go where we wanted to go based on emotional health, mental health, yeah. trauma. Yeah, we're going to talk about some solutions, but there were some things that I didn't hit that I probably, I think we need to hit too. Um, on the hills of the Texas shooting, there's been a lot of copycats trying to emulate and do the same thing he did. So I wanted to hit on, you know, some contributing factors. The media has been glorifying this. Yeah. Um, and politicians for their own political aspirations, they have been running this nonstop and it's created this revenge fantasy. So for all the kids out there that are hurting and angry it's giving them this, oh, yeah, I can do this kind of thing. It's really bad and really unhealthy. And it's kind of reminds me of what 13 Reasons Why I was about did. to say it's what happened with 13 Reasons Why. When you glorify a yeah. crime, yeah. this is why I believe, sorry to interrupt you, no, but this is why I believe. Don't mention the kid's name. Yeah. Make it a national policy. You hurt people. We don't give you the credit of even mentioning your name. And I will not mentioning his, mention his name because it glorifies it. But 13 Reasons Why did that. Yeah. And and I think they were their heart behind it was to stop and prevent bullying. And I think they were they were they were heading that way. They were kind of close, but um, they really did ultimately glorify suicide and i mean it's really the whole premise of the show is yeah. her 13 reasons why she did commit, commit suicide. suicide so what happened afterwards is you have kids across the nation there's a spike in suicide so well there was there was this. i can't remember correct me if I'm wrong, 10 10 12 girls made a pact oh it was after a, watching 13 reasons why and committed suicide i mean there's a lot it was a lot more i think the yeah. rate um it was yeah, I don't want to misquote, yeah. but it went up quite a bit specifically after, I mean, like almost 50% what the normal numbers were for that period. Um, so it's horrible. And that's why you're seeing some copycats, kids trying to do the same thing, because we are, even if you don't say his name, we're glorifying um, and promoting this nonstop in the news media. It's not healthy. It's not good. We need yeah. to... I have a huge thing against the news media, and I talk about this with you often. Yeah. I'm like, you have a responsibility. This is our breakfast <laughs> conversation. This is our breakfast conversation when you say, Yaku, you have a responsibility. And and everybody does. To bring does. truth. Yeah, of course we do. Everybody does. But yeah. hopefully I have a little bit of your ear. You um, have my both my ears and my heart. I, I pray for you. I pray for everybody you're in contact with. But, I mean, really anybody, we have a responsibility. What we focus on, what we bring attention to, what we speak about, it influences <laughs> everyone around us yeah. and specifically Culture. people in the news media and content creators what you're creating it's not just about money it's not just entertainment we have to weigh the cultural impact of what we're creating and what we're speaking it's not about making money it's not about entertaining like what are you creating i want to create life i want to create life with our words so in the news media i i've had to shut it off because i'm like this is just so negative have, have you noticed that certain shows make you angry you have the news all the time. Things make you angry or fearful. Shut it off. That is not a life-giving source. We have to shut those off. Just like the video games we talked about last time too. With Eric and Dylan, yeah. Yes. So the mentality of a shooter um, is what people want to talk about. And I go, wait, it's way earlier than that. Way earlier. We just had a we just did a show with um, with a politician, and she's talking about you know 
kind of when you think of the state, the mental state of a nation and where you are as a nation, and we talk about fatherlessness and how, you know, they want to say this institutional racism in this country. There's not, but there is institutional destruction of the nuclear family where 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 the mother is actually paid by by HUD and by welfare for the father not to be home. Almost all these kids, including this kid in Uvalde, no father present. Now the father comes out and makes crazy statements. Okay. But a fatherless generation is a hurting generation. That's just a fact. Historically it's a fact. And we're incentivizing fathers not to True. be involved in the family today. True. And to your point, you were talking about last time, we're not teaching men how to be fathers. We've yeah. really cut at men, and it's <laughs> this is the result. And I don't want to excuse moms either, because one of the things I picked up in like when I studied all of these these different, um, you know, Eric and Dylan and different guys like them at the time is they had they had serious issues with women too. Yeah. So sometimes there are mother wounds that people don't talk about. Um, there's also rejection from women. Um, it's really painful, you know, only a face your mother can love. Like we have this this thing of like your mother should love you. Like that should be the unconditional love you have. And it's not always there. No. And it's painful no, it's when not. it's not no, it's there. Not. <clears throat> but it's really about intercepting, right? It's about intercepting the child that's struggling and hurting and to intercept the child, to bring hope to the child, a little bit of love. It doesn't even take a lot, mm -hmm. just a little bit. We talked about it in episode one. Now in episode two, I want to go in the, the second episode, I want to get into some of the trauma trauma elements and in what we call yeah. trauma triggers in trauma therapy. Uh, Rebecca, uh, that the camera cannot see. <laughs> the amazingly talented and beautiful Rebecca and then the very astute Dan Funk behind the control board, making sure it looks good. Can you pull up for us? This is a TED Talk that I encourage people to go watch. It's a TED Talk called 83,000 Brain Scans. Uh, I did a TED Talk, of course. Please watch that one as well. That's on human trafficking. But this TED Talk, this doctor makes a, a pretty logical riveting statement he said mm -hmm. psychiatry or psychiatrist is the only division of healthcare where the doctor does not study the organ that they treat well let me say this people don't know people don't really know this about me but my degree is in medicine orthopedics <laughs> well every single knee operation i've had and i've had many they looked at my knee they put a scope inside my knee. Mm -hmm. They analyzed the knee, my shoulder, my hip that's reconstructed. When I broke my jaw, I mean, we take images. When you go to the dentist, they take x-rays. But psychiatrists don't look at the brain. Here's here are two brains on the screen. Two patients with depression. And he's talking about the levels of depression. And you can actually see damage. And these are areas, functional areas. Um, that shows symptoms of of activity in the brain in depression. Uh, Rebecca, can you go to a previous a previous screenshot for me? Yep, right there. Healthy brain on the left, no brain trauma. Brain trauma on the right. We're literally talking about soft tissue brain that dies, holes in the brain. So now we're looking at a kid, and he's talking about this clearly, and he's ADHD. Depression, anxiety, uh, suicidal thoughts, forgetfulness, um, just just n n no ability to focus, right? Brain trauma doesn't necessarily just mean a kid hit his head or fell. That's obvious brain trauma, which football, he talks about football, incredible brain trauma. Yeah. But you can heal it. Yes, you can. Of of everything that he's talking about is how you can rehabilitate the brain. But it's hard if you can't see it. You don't but you know need exactly. to you need to know what you're rehabilitating yeah. and what area of the brain you're rehabilitating. Uh, grab us a couple more pictures a little bit later, Rebecca. I just want to show people. I just want to you know pique people's interest here. Keep going. Love that. <coughs> yeah, we have the ability now to do brain scans. Yep. Another look at the trauma in that brain. Now, what he's saying, and he's considered, is that mild traumatic brain injury. He actually talks about 
violence in children. Mm -hmm. And you talked about children that behave violently, how there is brain trauma. Brain trauma can be pornography, yeah, drugs. So he says a reason not to do drugs is you're killing parts of your brain. Literally. Right? So when we see people behave, act out against the norm, I think we need to start having this conversation when it's relating to children as is there a brain injury? Is there some, not just a, a, a disorder. Oh, it's <laughs> ADHD. Forget about that. What Get the in there, like take yeah. a scan of the brain and see, is there a, because you're going to find that certain areas of the brain respond to sexual trauma, mm -hmm. certain areas of the brain to physical trauma or impact, falling off a skateboard, snow accidents, yeah. what uh, skiing accidents. But there's trauma to the brain there with is. abuse and neglect. And so many times, like one of our big coping mechanisms and ways we survive is we just kind of keep going or you think things are normal, especially. Or medicate. Yeah, you, you self-medicate and yeah. it, it doesn't have to be medication. It could be food. It could be, you know, a whole bunch of also unhealthy things to self-medicate. Alcoholism is a self-medication um, that's also harmful. But especially when you're younger, you think this is normal. Um, kids that are abused young, they think this is normal. They don't know that they need help. Um, we experience that a lot with trafficking victims is yes. they don't know they're victims because this is just what love is. This is just my life. They don't well, know how it difference. was defined for them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so oftentimes it's hard to rescue somebody. It's hard to help somebody who doesn't know they need help. Um, I know like for me, that was a really big thing is I was, you know, I was saying I was fine. I was fine. I've got this. I've got this. I've got this until I didn't. Yeah. Um, and we've experienced that with, with family too and with alcoholism. And um, there's a lot of different coping mechanisms we have to deal with trauma but and you'll find that if you don't deal with it immediately it's going to come up it's going to get triggered talk, elsewhere talk, we talked about that i want to take a quick break and then i want to come back and i want to talk we talked about that on the drive over to the studio um the notion of not delaying yeah the healing i want to get your opinions on what happens when you do delay it patriot mobile is the only christian conservative cell phone company in the united states and that is a fact because they boldly speak about their values. They do not donate to Planned Parenthood. They actually align with your conservative Christian values. So check them out. Dial 972-PATRIOT. Mention the bottom line. You are going to get free activation. And if you're a veteran, thank you so much for serving our nation. They're going to take extra good care of you. Glenn and his team at Patriot Mobile are amazing. They hold your values. It's time that we vote with our dollar and Stop supporting the companies that are for the things that we're against, such as aborting the unborn or turning the other way when we talk about sex trafficking or wanting an open border. Uh, Glenn and his team went to the border with us. They served the men and women on the border. They help us deliver food to the needy. Uh, so check out Patriot Mobile. It's a company you can trust. Uh, great service of your cell phone, but even better, customer service. 972 Patriot mentioned the bottom line. Thank you. Okay, Philip. Why why not? I don't have a stat on this. Maybe I don't know. I don't know that you could pull a stat on this. But how much of trauma is suppressed by people and, and the healing is delayed if they ever get to it? If they ever identify what's really now wrong with them, right? Because suppressing trauma doesn't make it go I away. I don't think you can measure that. And it's interesting, too, because it's it's so individualistic, too. I am so sensitive. That's just who I am and how God made me. So the stuff that hurt me might bounce off other people and not bother them. Um, obviously, there's very traumatic events that happen, and they affect people differently. And people have different responses. So it's very... Um, yeah, the same event can happen to 12 different people and you could get 12 different responses. It's fascinating. Um, but time is a huge element, um, especially with children. You'll find that if you do suppress something or try and move through something, I know that, um, oh, they, there's this, I love this book. It's called um, The Whole Brain Child. Yeah. And it talks about brain development, right and left brain, um, top and bottom up the brain and then it wants to 
help the children deal with their emotions and logic and not go too far one way or the other. Integrate. And I think a lot of adults aren't great at integrating. Um, but so they use an example of this toddler who was in a car accident uh, with a babysitter. And anytime he was in a car, he'd, he'd make this um, ambulance sound. So it being in the car triggered the car crash for him. And they had to get through and talk through the event. You have to talk through trauma. It takes the power away when you talk through these different events. That's why it's so damaging. How many people have we talked through that have been through abuse like decades prior and never, talked, never about talked about it? Never talked about it. And um, now it's layer upon layer upon layer upon layer. Right? And you're creating and, and more problems. Buried. Yeah. yeah, and more problems. Because it's it didn't heal from the first thing. Um, I'm thinking about, I have a, a grandfather who's a Korean War veteran. He's actually on an interview today. And he had serious trauma in the military. And he had nightmares for decades until he finally got to a point with um, a young counselor who helped him with forgiveness and letting some things go. And um, whatever. And that she, was recent. He's, yeah, 90, he's 92. Yeah. At the moment. And I didn't think, I think that healing happened at 89 or 90. It's in his 80s. Yeah, it was. Think about that. I know. I mean, guys, come on. We cannot let our children in this nation that just went through hell on earth, by the way, with yeah. COVID and the lockdowns and social distancing and can't see your friends and see your friends on Zoom and all this <laughs> nonsense, right? The trauma that we are inflicting upon American children yeah. is ungodly it's unholy we cannot now on top of that delay helping them we need to step in and identify the kid that's isolated or, or has a behavioral change mm -hmm. or is acting out we say this all the time a child that's acting out is screaming for help absolutely is screaming for structure number one boundaries mm -hmm. consistency yeah love support, sustenance. These are not the kids who just go, oh, that's the wild kid, the outcast. Everybody stay away from him. He's a troubled child. No, he's a child screaming, saying, help me, help me, before I do something very, very dangerous yeah. and harmful like the kid in Uvalde. And I think we have this, this message in society where we want to tell kids to be quiet or separate the kids from the adults. And um, that's why the messaging I got of be quiet was so damaging to me because I did need to talk and I, I did want to kind of conclude that a little bit I got to the place um, where I you know I couldn't get out of bed anymore yeah. I wasn't fine I was no, not I, fine. I was there I was not fine um, but I got to the place and I thankfully had people around me that were supporting me where I decided this is not how I want to live my life and you know you were you got healing. You had a breakthrough at the time, which helped me. And when I started going through my healing and talking and getting rid of stuff that was hurting me, um, I did. I was able to come back to my family. And my dad was the most responsive. I have the best relationship with my dad out of anybody else in the family. And it was it was ugly at first. It was ugly, and I had to go to him and I said, "Look, if somebody, if you can't be trusted with information, people aren't going to tell you anything." And I think he got that because I, from then on, I've been able to talk to him. And it's not always easy, but like we've gotten to the point where we can have honest conversations and we've apologized and we've reconciled and we're not living in the past and living in hurt because there was that honest conversation and talk and reconciliation and um, like, I'm sorry stuff. Yeah, but so, so often it just, it takes someone just initiating, right? Breaking the ice. It takes someone initiating being yeah. the bigger person, but walking in humility. In the it's moment, a lot of humility. In, in the moment you feel like, man, I'm the one taking the shots here. I'm the one bowing. No, that's that's true godly humility. Being the bigger person, saying, "I'm stepping in. I'm going to apologize. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to pick up the phone or call the loved one, etc., cetera, etc." Cetera. Because here's what I want people to realize too, especially if you are a parent. I mean. And I hit on this a little bit. Everything you do and say affects other people, especially your spouse, especially your kids, especially your close family members and friends. So we well, those closest to us are normally they're our sounding boards, yeah. right? Those are the ones we, do, that we typically also aren't, so, aren't the nicest to. True. And which if, is not good. If we aren't healthy, that is affecting everybody else around us. And I did want to hit on this too. I missed um, last time. 
I was able to help some people in my high school group, but I was really unhealthy. And there were people that I saw who were also unhealthy. I could see it. I knew it. I knew they were not okay. But I didn't reach out to them. And there are a couple people that had committed suicide that I knew were not okay. And some of my biggest regrets, because I didn't do anything, and I knew they were hurting, but I also wasn't healthy. So me healthy would have helped them. Yeah. Me getting healthy has helped or, or a you, lot or, of or other Or you people. healthy would be in a place to act upon what you recognize. You yes. saw that they were struggling, yes. but you were not in a healthy enough place to go outside yourself and go do something. Yeah. And that's the point, though. We're yeah. on this planet to help other people. We are. But we also need to be healthy. And this is, we, we got it in one of one of the shows you just wrote, you know, Pieces, you know, which is an incredible TV series show. And, and there's a line in where you write, um, where this character Truman says, there's a reason on an airline they tell a mom to put the oxygen mask on her face first before helping her child. Yeah. If you're not healthy, healthy, you can't help anybody else. Yeah. If you're not alive, you can't help anybody else. And I've seen that a lot um, in these scenarios where it's easy to blame the troubled kid. Yeah. It's easy to blame. Even as the parent figure or the teacher or whatever or the peers, it's easy to blame the troubled kid. But what's your responsibility? What's, what's really going on in that troubled kid's life then? Yeah, but especially as a parent of a troubled kid, um, I th- just I'm at a point where like what's my responsibility I can't control anybody else around me I can't control the decisions they make but what I do does affect them yeah what's my responsibility um so I've just I've gone through this season and like what have I hurt anybody do I need what do I need to apologize for what do I need to get right and parents too when you end cycles you can end cycles in your family like don't pass on stuff when you hold on to stuff, you hold on to bitterness, you're, you're alcoholic, you're watching porn, whatever stuff you're into, it's getting passed on to your kids. It's affecting your kids. You've got to stop these things. Don't let abuse continue in your household. Don't let neglect continue in your household. It stops with us. Um, that's really a big thing that's been... Yeah, it's getting, it. it's getting, look, it's getting uncomfortable, stepping out of your comfort zone. But it, it first is open your eyes, to, <laughs> right? And I probably pray to see, pray to really see what's really going on. Pray yeah. to let God open your eyes, remove the scales from your eyes so you can see the hurting, the lost, the broken, the destitute. So that you can train your children how to identify the classmate that needs some help early on. Yeah. Because it's it, a lot harder the further down. Oh, down. my goodness. And, we, and it's the same thing with all the trafficking victims, too. Um, it's way easier to prevent than to rehabilitate. Oh, yes. 100%. Um, so as soon as trauma happens, um, anything, you've got to deal with it head on. Um, don't let those things fester because it will get triggered later on. It doesn't go away. Don't be the person that, you know, decades later. No, I, no it doesn't go away. It's stuff. suppressed and then it comes out randomly one day and it's normally disastrous. You're not fine. It's normally no, it's normally it's disastrous yeah. and then it affects other people. Now there's a marriage and there's kids and it affects everything or you're just you're an employer, an employee, it just it's not good suppressing and delaying healing because of trauma and hurt and pain is a bad idea. It is. It's a bad idea. It is. And it'll probably get It'll feel worse <laughs> to get all that stuff out and to get it all exposed. Um, I know we have a, a close friend that went through lots of rehab, lots of things until it finally came out that there was abuse. Yeah. Um, another friend that alcoholism for decades until it came out, there was trauma through military stuff and things that happened. So until you deal with that, you're really you know you're really not dealing with anything and you're in trouble and everybody yeah. else around you is affected because they, of that they suffer because of it yeah well you're also breaking down society right because yeah. we're all we're linked yeah and you you say we're pieces to the puzzle every piece matters so when a piece is missing the puzzle's not complete yeah now you know so if, if you're the the proximity you have to people and where god planted you on this earth there's a reason the Absolutely. people you interact with daily versus the people you act with weekly, interact with weekly and monthly. But the people you interact with daily, you we have serious impact, yeah. influence, 
and they and them on us. Yeah. And so what we say matters or what we don't say matters and what we do or don't do matters. So when someone's hurting and we let them hurt by themselves because we think, oh, this will pass. <laughs> no, go have the uncomfortable Time conversation. Time does not heal yeah. all wounds. No, it's not. I really want everybody, all of your listeners to really get that the whole every piece matters. There's a reason you're here today. Um, the moment you were conceived was the moment God decided the world could not live without you. We have to understand the impact and influence we have. No, it may not be a million people, but there is somebody around you that is impacted by who you are and what you say, and you have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to make this world a better place. That's why we're here, and we have to show up. The world, people are counting on us to show up. And for the one hurting that's watching this today that goes, you know what, I'm hurting, no one's talking to me, no one's reaching out to me, we are, we are. Yeah. Go to our website, yakuboyansministries.org. Go to the website. It'll be in the uh, in the section below the show, and reach out, ask. We, we don't know it all, but we know a lot of people, and we can connect you where where you are and where you need help. But that's the starting point, Philippa. For me, is first people need to get help for their own stuff. Get mm-hmm. it. Get help. Why? So that you can be healthy. Yeah. And you can fight for others. And then if you feel like you're borderline healthy, then fight for others. Identify the one that's struggling. Yeah. And step in. And it's just a conversation. I, it, it, people make it such a big deal. True. Sit down, be blunt and blatant about it. Yeah. Hey, Johnny, I get the feeling you're struggling with something. I want you to know. <laughs> I I'm love here. that you do that. You're so good at that. <laughs> yeah, I do do that. Yeah. You just, there's no time to mess around. No. Like, let's... Yeah, walk me out here now into public to a stranger and I'll just go. What? I mean, what is the... Yeah. What can I lose? Yeah. Well, they may not like you. I didn't yeah. go there for them to like me. This is true. I, I'm not. I'm not looking for them to like me or for them to approve yeah. of me. But Johnny, what's going on in your life, dude? And well, what what, what do you think? I think I'm feeling some stuff. Are yeah. you okay? Are you depressed? Are you lonely? Yeah. And we're all works in progress. We're never gonna get it right all the time. Thank the Lord for grace and mercy, and apologize quickly. And yes, got to learn to forgive quickly too. Um, and just. You know, that that's really important too. You're never gonna be perfect no. enough to And the time is like, never right. There's no, never a right time. Right well, we're just waiting. We just no. had some people go down to go meet their brother because they caught him in some crazy stuff, sexually immoral stuff, and now they're gonna and they're delaying. When should we talk to him? And I go, in now. <laughs> well, yeah. we gotta fly. No, get now. Have the yeah. conversation today. Yeah. You don't know that, you, you know. T- tomorrow's not promised. Today or what he does tomorrow. Tomorrow maybe yeah. he crosses the line and he goes to prison. Yeah. Or he does something like you've all today. Yeah. Have the conversation today with your families today. Make it a dinner table conversation. Make it open policy in your home. We do in our home. Yeah. Tell me how you feel. And it's not yeah. that we're all driven by feelings. No. And and when someone when a child behaves all emotional, we tell them, Hey, you're being emotional. Take some of the emotion out of it. Or no, it's time to be emotional. But just talk about the stuff that ultimately saves or takes lives yeah what's making you feel that way what's contributing to that feeling what's causing that not just yeah. how you feel yeah, yeah yeah there's a there's a reason um for sure yeah what can we do to help you yeah and tra- let's train our kids to identify children on at school that need help i mean that it's life-saving um to do that and i know rachel was very good at that in the columbine school and i'm not ashamed you can see that in the movie too but um yeah we have to i'm trying to train train that in my friends too it's the worst feeling even they're little right now but it's the worst feeling to be that new kid and be alone like it takes nothing to just go say hi include people i'm trying to teach my kids to do that too um so. So, so honestly what i have found I don't know, man. I may be oversimplifying this, but I've just not had any challenge with this. It's just, hey, how are you doing? Mm-hmm. I see you. D- I see you. D- yeah, I see good. people just want to be seen. Oh, you mean? Yeah, I yeah. notice you. It's true. I notice you, and and I'm recognizing that you you seem down today. Yeah. You seem alone today. And and let the person in tell you, well, not. If they don't want to come out that minute and tell you that something's wrong, they're going to remember 
that one you saw and one you were willing to have a conversation yeah. with him. And at least now they may think they have someone to call. Yeah. Which is always so sad to me when I look at a suicide and I go, there's nobody. Yeah. We just had someone we know. Really sad. A young kid. And it, it affects. Early 20s, commit suicide. And I go, there's nobody, nobody you could call. Please to, talk to people. To just help you just. Reach out to people. Yeah. Stay alive for one more day. You know, statistic is like overwhelmingly. Yeah. successful if the person is contemplating suicide and they talk to somebody to, <coughs> to just stay alive one more day how they make it wow it's like literally we walk past people that are desperate for not a, they're not asking for a million dollars they're not asking for a job necessarily it's just pause your life to notice somebody else every piece step matters. in and if you never know the outcome so what yeah. We're not doing it for the accolades. We're not doing it for the credit, but it saves lives. Yeah, hundred percent. People people get to a dark moment and they don't see a way up. Mm -hmm. And it's not that they need the next year for you to hold their hand. Sometimes they just need to make it to the morning. Mm -hmm. And a prayer and God changes a perspective, and all of a sudden a human being is alive, versus they were going to to commit suicide. Yeah. It's look, it's on us as a society. All these shootings, these issues, guns don't shoot themselves. These are not human beings are hurting and hurt people hurt people. And healed people can heal people. So let's help the hurt people and let's get the people that feel healthy enough to get out there and get as many healthy as possible. Thank you, Philippa. Uh, appreciate Thanks it. Part on. two on this. And again, we could go on forever, but we needed a part <laughs> two on this. I think the next one... We're going to tease this a little bit. The next time you're on, I think you're actually interviewing me, which is going to be very interesting. You don't want to miss that or any of it. Please subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so that you get notified when the amazing Rebecca posts new shows. And then tell your friends about the show. It's making an impact. It's changing lives. It's saving lives. We need your support. God bless you. Talk to you next time. Thanks. I'm on.